you see this 10 plot, 9 plot thing everywhere, because um, it basically, this is five simulator we try to do. We try to basically find solutions that will impact the life of a billion people within 10 years, positively. Okay, and originally it was a non-profit, sponsored by Genentech, Autodesk, Nokia, Google, Cosmic Foundation, Cisco, all the big guns. Um, and its objective, as I said, is to educate, inspire, empower you know, readers to understand and utilize what we call exponentially advancing technology. It's like technology that's moving really high speed, like 3D printing and so on, which I'll talk about. And it was founded by these two people, Ray Kutzfeld and Philip Diamandis. So Ray Kutzfeld, if you don't know who he is, um, when he was 17 years old, he wrote, he wrote the first computer-generated music. Uh, these are books that I highly encourage you to read. Uh, these two are actually getting into a movie. So I actually didn't read the book, I watched the movie too, I like watching stuff. Um, the singularity is near, it's how it got its name, right? It talks about how technology is moving at such high pace that within uh, 15 years, you will be able to merge yourself into a machine. A computer will be able to replicate every single neuron in your brain, and you could download your entire brain to a machine and live forever if you wanted to. Uh, you know, that's what they call the technological singularity. And that's how they got the name, but not, not, not everybody agrees with Ray, obviously. Um, if you're interested in health, I highly suggest this book of Ken Zen. Um, he basically talks about how the human body is programmed to age. After you hit your sexual peak, you start aging. Because in the old in the old days, that was how you managed to prolong the evolution of the species, right? Because you better to leave the uh, uh, resources to the uh, to the uh, your offspring than to you know hold fast like ourselves, right? So, but the thing is that now we live in a time of abundance. Our body is too programmed to age. So he talks about how we have the technology to essentially prolong our life and cure aging, right? If we can only live long enough for that technology to arrive. So he says that if you can live for 25 to 30 years, you can extend your life by another 25 to 30 years. Unless you get knocked down by a bus here or a tram in the uh, So anyway, um, you know, read the book, it's really interesting. Uh, and he made his book was How to Create a Mind that he wrote about two years ago. And he wanted to create a super brain. And he was going to raise money to do it. And then Google came along and said, Larry Page said, why bother? You know, just come and book for us. So he, for the first time in his life, he's an employee at Google. He's the director of engineering of Google. So when, when he was 17 years old, he wrote the first computer generated music. Um, you know, he degrees of MIT and so on. And he was very, very uh, uh, passionate about trying to allow blind people to access the library um, and read books. So he is the guy that invented the CCD scanner chip in your scanners. And if you're using Siri or Google voice recognition software, it's all from his original technology. He created a machine called the optical reading machine for the blind. And became good friends with Stevie Wonder. You know, Stevie Wonder, the famous blind singer. So Stevie Wonder <laughs> was very grateful and said, Ray, you know I'm blind, can you help me? Can you, can you invent a, a, you know, a device that I can compose different musical instruments on a keyboard? And he invented a Kutzfeld synthesizer, which you see in all the Kutzfeld brand and all the rock bands. He sold it to, the, uh, to a Korean company uh, a while back. So, what is exponential curve, right? You guys uh, might know that, you know, I'll, I'll talk a bit about exponential curve. Right now, we have the technology to stimulate an insect brain, right? By end of uh, probably this year or next year, a mouse brain, and by the time <coughs> by a human brain, and by 2050, all of human brain. That's how powerful computers are going to become. What are you going to do with all this? Uh, amazing computational power. And let me just talk about exponential for a while. So you know that our human brain is very, very good for linear thinking. We think in terms of steps, right? Step one, two, three, four, and so forth. We're not very good in thinking in exponential terms. And this is the thing that we're going to talk about in the second part of this talk. Uh, so if I say to you, if I take a meter a step, in 30 steps I will be 30 meters away, right? But if I say I take an exponential step, I double every, every time I walk, in 30 steps, how far do you think you're about? What's that? A billion. A billion, right? A billion meters, 26 times around the Earth. And that's how fast technology is moving. All right? And this is what our brain cannot comprehend. And my, my second part of the talk, if we have time, I'll talk about exponential organization. These are companies that are growing exponentially, right? Not linearly. This is what our brains are kind of like into it. The other co-founder is Peter Damatis. Peter Mandis is famous for um, his XPRIZE project. Uh, he wrote this book called Abundance, The Future is Better Than You Think. Peter is actually quite short, as you can see here, but he has his passion to, be an to go to space. But obviously, you know, he wouldn't make a cut from NASA. So he wanted to bring down the cost of flying to space. And that's 
why he created the SpaceX and the X, uh, sorry, the X Prize. Okay, he was very inspired by Charles Lindbergh trying to fly across the Atlantic Ocean to win a $26,000 prize money, put up by a hotelier in New York because he wanted to see more people flying from Europe to New York and then he makes money there, right? So he put up a $26,000 prize money which is equivalent to today's about $330,000, right? But that small amount of money generated enough R&D, I think over a tune of about $2 million of today's money, that within 10 years, people were flying across the Atlantic Ocean passenger. So you want to do the same for space. And you see here, this is a Space Galactic X in Google, right? And this was, he, he went and announced this X prize, a $10 million prize money to anybody who can make an aircraft that can fly um, 100 kilometers above sea level, which is technically space, land and fly again within two weeks. He did this without getting sponsors. And somebody won. And he was in dire straits, right? He actually asked Richard Branson, and Branson said he does not invest in non proven technology. But then when they won, Branson bought the rights to Virgin Galactic, and then he got $5 million from the Ansari Prize, uh, Ansari Family Foundation. And then since then, a few other X Prizes have been running. This is the first X Prize that was canceled. It was the first X Prize to sequence the genes of 100 people over the age of 100. The reason was that if you can find the common gene, perhaps you can find the cure to aging. Um, and do it for less than $1,000 in sequencing the gene. But the cost of sequencing the gene has fallen more than, uh, you know, has gone below a thousand. So they had to cancel this prize. The big one right now is this one, the, lunar, the Google Lunar X Prize. The first person who can send a robot to the moon, move 50 feet or 50 meters, take a photo and send it back to Earth, wins $30 million in prize money and $30 million in prizes from NASA, uh, contract from NASA. So there are about 19 companies in the world competing with this prize. And then Paul Palm one, I think they uh, already announced on Venus, uh, some, some preliminary Venus, $10 million. First person who can create a mobile application that can better diagnose a patient than 10 certified board doctors wins the prize, like a strike order in a start price. So, if you, okay, the good news is, the update on this, if you're applying to Singularity University directly, your chances of getting in is, well, that's the bad news, getting harder, okay? Um, the year that I applied in 2011 was like 2,200 applicants, it's doubled to 4,000, then it's like 6,000 or 8,000 and so on, which is why then Singularity had to run a competition around the world to basically have the best person in each country win the prize in their country and come in, um, uh, you know, do a tennis program at Singularity. Um, and if you apply directly, you look at three things, right? Your academic skill level. 20% um, of people have PhDs, okay, but 20% have no degrees. Uh, so these are people like Zuckerberg, Gates, still at school, the waste of time. And then the next thing is your entrepreneurial skill, your leadership skill, and thirdly, your passion to try and solve these problems that we face today in the world, or what we term as grand challenges. The good news is, uh, previously you had to find all the sponsors, or Singularity might give a scholarship, very, very rare. Now, Google has stepped in. Anybody who can't afford to pay and get in will actually be funded by Google. So this is my class, right, the fun class. Um, and this is why I tell these guys, you know, fight my own. Who you who that I'm here. So there you go. Um, but look at my class there, right? So 35 countries, and the Saudi Arabian guy, we have six Israelis. And the Israeli sponsors actually sponsored a Palestinian bill to the program. So it's a very diversified area. Now, why was Singularity formed? Because Peter Damendis found that you need diversity to have innovation. If you have all Americans in there, it's easy to get into NASA and so on, but then you know, it could be a much of a group thing, right? Because these are all Australians trying to solve the same problem, trying to look at the problem from the same perspective. Um, secondly, Peter realized that universities, traditional universities, take a very long time to catch up the technology, right? It takes about three years to put any new program onto the curriculum. By the way, Singularity University is not an accredited university. It will never be an accredited university because more than half the cost materials is changed every three months. And what Peter found was that there's so many new technology coming out from PhDs and so on, theses and so on, but you probably need a PhD yourself just to, just to read somebody's thesis, right? So it's not, it's not available or accessible to the rest of the world. So Singularity aims to change that. So in the program itself, what they do is basically, um, you know, of course, definitely was we run this global competition, so I'm flying off to Malaysia next week because we are having a, uh, the uh, judging of the competition in Malaysia. And it's actually easier for you to apply in your home country. And we're trying to get, perhaps, hopefully, um, after the meeting here today, we might be able to get the singularity competition for Australia going. Um, 
we ran in the last two years, but it's kind of kind of difficult to get sponsorship this year. Um, <coughs> basically, it's the person with the best idea um, that can impact the life of one million Australians. Uh, last year was won by Susan Grant from New South Wales. She's doing a PhD in nanotechnology in Oxford. But her idea, it was, we were kind of co-sponsored last year by Packard Foundation. And basically, her idea was how to plant a billion trees using drones. Because Packard Foundation required last year's uh, competition to be in the area of energy, uh, environment. <coughs> so at Singularity, is a 10 weeks program. Your first seven weeks, you get text style talks and you get, um, you know, you get test style talks and you get to um, basically visit Tesla, Facebook, NASA, a whole bunch of Google, and so on, and meet some really amazing people. In your final three to five weeks, you have to work on a project with your fellow classmates that will impact the lives of a billion people. Singularity takes 2% of any company spin off. And this is what I was uh, saying, like, you know, in the US, like Stanford also takes 2% of Google, the Google spin off from Stanford, right? But unfortunately, in Australia, you know, the universities take anywhere from 25 to 100% why you see very few commercialization techniques out here. So these are the areas that we work in, global health, water, energy, environment, food, education, security, poverty, and one more is space. So these are the areas that you work in to try to impact a billion people. And why do we do that? Why do we ask you to work on a problem that's impact a billion people? Because if you can solve a problem that's impacting a billion people, it's much easier for you to actually make a billion dollars, right? Sustainable, right? Profitable. Secondly, you know, if we teach you how to solve or look for look at some solid a person problem. When you come back to your home country, you're not you're not going to go and create another app to take photo of food, are you? So, so we run a graduate study program. We also run a seven day graduate program. We run an exponential medicine program, exponential finance program. This is not updated. Uh, 